I think being polite, courteous, and non-confrontational are good traits. When people do not exude those traits, I think less of them. I've been guilty of going against those things many times. I'm certainly not proud of it. But I try. It's my goal. But I don't care what kind of colorful metaphors people want to use in their conversation, in things that they say to someone. It doesn't matter to me if someone swears. It doesn't make any difference to me. You know, none of that has to do with whether someone is being polite or courteous or non-confrontational. I look at swearing as nothing more than, and, and, and colorful metaphors as nothing more than just like an accent, you know, as far as I'm concerned. If people are being courteous and polite, or it's quite apparent that they're trying to be courteous and polite, I'm going to think more highly of them. I'm going to think that they're probably, if we get into a discussion, they're probably going to take my arguments in good faith more than someone who doesn't do that sort of thing. If the moment that you see someone intentionally or unintentionally saying or doing something that you don't like or you don't understand, your immediate reaction is to jump up and tell the person in a confrontational manner, you don't like this, then that's not really a trait I'm going to respect very much. I mean, there are situational things. There are times where, yeah, you've had enough. Okay, fine. But to just be like this in just everyday occurrences... Someone isn't even trying to do something to hurt your feelings or to hurt you or to make you feel less than or anything like that. And you just jump all over their case when they didn't, they, they weren't even trying to. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to have respect for that kind of attitude. I mean, everyone has a bad day, but if I see someone like that, I'm going to try to stay far away from them. And if I see there as being a remote possibility that that anger could be suddenly directed towards me or their behavior or their how they're getting offended at things or whatever, it could be directed towards me, I'm out of there. I, I, I just leave. I leave where... I, I, there have been points where something like that has happened in front of me, and I have just left the groceries in the cart and just walked out. Sorry to the people that, that have to work there, that have to restock those things. Luckily, I, I don't uh, shop huge, so it wouldn't be that hard, but still... Um, yeah, when I when I see something like that, yeah, it's it's time for me to leave. You know, I I don't want any part of that. People like that are an infinite series of lose lose situations all around. There's no reason for people to act that way just generally. I mean, if there was a, a there was an, an, a a genuine situation that that happened, okay, fine. You know, they and they should be angry if something terrible happened to them, right? You know, and. And if there's no chance of me being involved, yeah, I, I might, uh, I might kind of stick around to watch and see what the drama, you know, unfolds. But, uh, but, you know, in general, we're supposed to live in a civilized society. And being polite, courteous, and non-confrontational are part of living in a civilized society. If we let that totally break down and we stop being courteous, this country would be done for in no time. What happens so often from some of these people who just aren't courteous to others at all is they expect everyone else to be extra courteous to them. I think of a situation that happened with me uh, just like uh, about a week ago. Uh, I'm coming out of a grocery outlet on South Tacoma Way, and uh, there's some guy that's that's trying to make a going to make a left turn, and and he, he's positioned in such a way that you, you can't go around him to, to you know make a right turn around him and he's going to be there forever and on here south to come away there's this guy he starts he pulls in into you know makes a left turn across south to come away and into this parking lot and just stops there and the lady behind him is just stuck uh you know out in traffic and so i roll down the window i say hey what's up and he gets out of the car and he says, you need to mind your own business, asshole. Yes. oh, hell no. Put it in back, uh, put it in reverse, back up, go out to a different exit. Fuck that. Be far away from that as possible. You know, he's blocking traffic. But anyone who even calls him out or even notices him, he's going to be offended. That, those kinds of attitudes suck. They suck. But you have the same thing coming from the Karens. How about that lady who was coughing on people in the supermarket? I'm surprised she didn't get punched in the face. There's all kinds of examples of, of people from all different demographics having that kind of attitude, and it sucks. Trump's America really brought this out in everyone. Like I said, in all demographics. 
Sure, it existed before Trump, but Trump made it hip and cool. Trump made people who normally felt rightfully marginalized felt vindicated. The bullies felt vindicated. So people who were that way already became worse than ever, in all demographics. Having said that, there are some political ideologies and philosophies that I just can't handle. You know, regardless of how polite, courteous, or non-confrontational someone tries to be about it. One of them is ethno-nationalism. People acting as though it's quite feasible, somehow, to geographically break everyone apart, you know, separate everyone, break them apart geographically uh, based on their race, based on their perceived race. And it's just like, well, so many people are mixed race as it is. It's just none of this works. There's so many, there's just so much wrong with it. And the things that, that you have to do, the, the type of fascism and authoritarianism you have to do to, to create something like, it's just, it's just the whole thing. The whole thing, it's just, it's madness. You know, and they can be very polite and nice about the way they say it, but the things they say are just maddening. Right? So, you know, that's, that's one example. And the, and the other two examples, are, they're, they're, kind, they're sometimes the same. You know, it's libertarianism and anarcho-capitalism, where it's this notion that the negative things about human nature and human instincts, you know, things like greed and hate, uh, they don't really exist, or they, they wouldn't exist if we had a free enough of a market. If we give people enough liberty, uh, all those bad things just kind of disappear, or they won't have as bad of an effect. That's, that's, the, the, the harm reduction is just to allow as much freedom as, and liberty as possible, right? It's, it's very strange. It doesn't make any sense. It's this mindset that we should view everything through the lens of liberty, through scales of liberty. You know, nothing else really matters. Oh, well, it's, well, it's just left and right. Oh, it's all the same thing, and they're just arguing over bullshit. The only thing that matters is, is, is this pure, you know, a purity spiral version of, of liberty, right? Which I guess I shouldn't, couldn't, shouldn't call it purity spiraling. It's, it's this, this element where you, you have complete removal of the government from your life. You know, that's, that's the ultimate goal. And, uh, as if that will just magically change people, right? Sorry, I'm going on about it more than I wanted to. Yeah, I, I, no matter how nice someone is about those things, I, I don't know how to be calm and, and collected when talking with people like that. I don't. I just, I just don't know how to do it. It's like talking with flat earthers. It's, it's this complete disconnection from, from part of reality. It's, it's like... It's, it's stuff that only works on paper. It, it, it only works if it's individually sealed in a vacuum, you know? So, I mean, I can understand that some people have similar views towards neoliberals. You know, people who claim to be on the left, but they're barely to the left of George Bush. They're the people who almost seem to give validity to the people who say that there's really no differences between the parties. You know, as if we don't have two parties. We do, but these types of people almost make it look like we don't. But that's all dependent on getting into a political discussion to begin with. And that doesn't just normally start happening with random people you run across in everyday life. You know, it doesn't spontaneously happen between strangers, you know, most of the time, unless you're at a rally or a protest or something. So again, it would seem reasonable to want people to be more polite, courteous, and non-confrontational, you know, in people's everyday interactions. Again, I try, but I'm not always successful. Let me know how you feel about all of this in the comments. Thanks for watching.